So tonight's topic is called the generational wealth gap. The generational wealth gap. We're gonna deal with um, the we're gonna basically be dealing with uh, exploring generational wealth, okay, and the generational wealth gap that exists between us and the nation. So we're gonna be dealing with that. All right. Um, I'm gonna open up with this article, okay. Uh, bear with me. Okay, uh, soldier hair guy, I need you to read that. When you see it, read it. Why South Africa is the world's most unequal society. Okay, why is South Africa the most unequal society? All right, we're gonna jump to um, read that. Read this paragraph instead. Read that. Inequality between nations is worse than inequality within nations. So inequalities within between nations is worse than inequality within the nation. Because if it's within the nations, we're able to work together to deal with the one thing that we have, okay? But when there's other nations involved, whatever little we have is also going to be taken away from us. Okay, come on. This means that the economic distance between an impoverished Burundian and a wealthy Belgian, for example, is far greater than the economic distance between impoverished and wealthy people within Burundi itself. You see that thing? Because within the country, in this intra, we are able to work together to help one another to build each other up. When somebody else comes from outside, they will cause division among us, okay? That's what's going on now. Read that. There is only one place where the severity of this global inequality is mirrored at a national level, South Africa. So South Africa's global, South Africa's inequality is mirrored, is, is happening at the what? It says it's happening at the national level. Meaning what? It's national. In South Africa, it's national. Okay, read. Here, the economic fortunes of the poorest people are similar to those of the most impoverished people in Burundi. Mm -hmm. While the richest people in South Africa can be compared to Belgium's richest. So it says the economic fortunes of the poorest people are similar to those of the most impoverished people in Burundi. So guess what? The poorest people in South Africa, they are what? It says they are similar to those that are most impoverished in Burundi. And the richest people in South Africa, they are equal to those that are in Belgium. Okay, come on. But what does it mean to, to be the world's most unequal society? We are the world's most, the world. That's why they're using the world inequality database. Go ahead. An inequality trends report, the first of its kind, launched on November 14th, 2019 by Statistics South Africa or Stats SA and the, National, and the South African Labor and Development Research Unit at the University of Cape Town gives us part of the answer. Okay, so the UCT decided to do some research on this thing. Go ahead. Monetary inequality. Monetary inequality, so it's about the money. Go ahead. While social grants and remittances have made the most notable headway in bridging the chasm between the runway riches of South Africa's wealthy few and the trade bear struggles of its impoverished majority, there is little to celebrate. There's little to celebrate. Why? Give me that in Luke 16 real quick. Luke chapter 16 and verse, start of verse 19. Luke 16 verse 19. Luke chapter 16 verse 19. Come on. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fed sumptuously every day come on and there was a certain beggar named lazarus which was laid at his gate full of souls so we represent lazarus we represent lazarus we are lazarus you see lazarus represents us we are the beggar okay watch this give me the book of ecclesiastes okay the book of ecclesiastes chapter 18 verse 33 Rack 18 33 
Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 33. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. That's what we thou do. Has nothing. That's what we do. We have nothing, but that's exactly what we do. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. Go ahead. When thou hast nothing up in thy purse, Please. for thou shalt lie, for thou shalt lie and wait for thine own life and be talked on. You see that thing? That's why now it says we are the most, the most, the world's most unequal society. What is it to? It's not talking about not the great white people. No, is it talking about Indians or colors? And no, mm -mm. it's talking about us. That's why we are talked on. That's why they even write articles like this. Read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 18, verse 33. Be not made a beggar by banqueting upon borrowing. When thou hast nothing in thy purse, for thou shalt lie in wait for thine own life and be talked on. You see that part right there? So now, right now, we are living, we are living, uh, we, are, we have been made beggar. We have been made beggars by banqueting upon borrowing. When thou hast nothing in thy purse, for thou shalt lie in wait for thine own life and be talked on. There's another one when it says, my son, leave not a beggar's life. Hold on. Watch this. Let me look for that precept. Okay. Give me one second. Mm. Yes. Give me Sarah chapter 40 to 28. Ecclesiastes chapter 40 to 28. My son, lead not a beggar's life. Mm -hmm. For better is for better it is to die than to beg. You see what the Lord is saying? It says, My son, lead not a beggar's life. For better it is to die than to beg. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay, go back to the article. Monetary inequality. Read that paragraph at the bottom. Monetary inequality. Mm -hmm. Income inequality in South Africa has deepened. According to the latest, no, 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 no. According read, to the read, latest figures... Read, 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 this, read this paragraph first. While social grants and remittances have made the most notable headway in bridging the chasm between the runway riches of South Africa's wealthy few and the, tre and the tread bay struggles of its impoverished majority, there is little to celebrate. So now the reason why I wanted to I went to go to I went to Luke 16. Go back to Luke 16, read verse 20 again. Luke chapter 16, verse 20. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, mm -hmm. which was laid at his gate full of souls. So we are Lazarus. You understand? That's what the Lord said, my son, lead not a beggar's life. Because right now we are beggars. We are begging for everything. So when it says um, social grants and all of that, we're going to touch on that thing. Because social grants and remittances are only made for beggars. Okay, watch this. Go ahead. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. And desiring to what? And desiring to be fed with the, with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. You see that part right there? The, the beggar desires to be fed with the crumbs which falls from the rich man's table. What is the crumb? Social grants and remittances. Remittances goes into, you see these companies? Another one is as Mukuru, I think that's another one, that's one of them. Another one is, um, there's a couple of these uh, institutions where they, uh, they are able to help you to send money across borders and all that. Okay, that's what, that's, that's what, is, that's what is called remittances. Okay, to be able to send money across borders and all that. Yes, because, um, that has basically allowed the government to also benefit from that thing because they're getting some tax and then they take those, they take the tax, they get it from there, they distribute it to the people. It comes back to the community, quote unquote. Okay, read that part again, verse 21. Luke chapter 16, verse 21. And desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table, Wait. over the dog's came and licked his sores. He says, moreover, the dog came and licked his sores. Who's the dog? The nations that came. The Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese. Okay, the Americans, the Europeans. 
the Chinese, the Jap, those are the dogs that came to lick our soul. Because when a dog licks your soul, guess what that soul of? It gets infected. It becomes what? It grows. The infection grows. They are the dog. You understand? But guess what they are doing? They are shutting us up or battering us up with social grants and remittances. That's the crumbs that are falling from the rich man table. Go ahead. Next paragraph. Income inequality in South Africa has deepened. According to the latest figures from the World Inequality Database, mm -hmm. the top 1% of South African earners take home almost 20% of all income in the country. You know, what, you, know what's, you know what's funny about this? Is that income inequality in South Africa has deepened. According to the latest figures from the World Inequality Database, which means there's a think tank there's a group of white people that sit down to, to, de, to find out how, how the people that they destroyed, how they are doing. How, is their, how, 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 how have their struggles deepened since we've, we've robbed them and we're still robbing them. So they are keeping track of how much they are destroying us. That's why they even have a database about it. You see that thing? Why would you have a database about this stuff? Why? Because you are tracking your... You are keeping track of the people that you colonize and your own. You see that thing? It says, according to the latest figures from the World Inequality Database. So a group of white men had to sit down to put this thing together. You understand? It says, the top 1% of South African earners take home almost 20% of all income in the country. That top 1% is talking about white people. Okay? While the top 10% take home 65%. That's talk about the, so the middle class, the low, not the middle class white people and Indians and Chinese and whatnot. But that 1% is talking about ESO. Okay, come on. The remaining, read that part. The remaining 90% of South African earners gets only 35% of total income. You see that part right there? The remaining 90%, that's us. Give me Hosea 1, verse 10. The remaining 90%, okay. The remaining 90% gets only 35% of the total income. Whatever is left. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Read that. Hosea chapter 1, verse 10. Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, mm -hmm. which cannot be measured nor numbered. Which cannot be measured nor numbered. So guess what? This 90% that they are, they are giving you is just an estimate. Okay, it's just an estimate. The remaining 90% of South African earners get only 35% of total income. That's just an, that 90% is just an estimate. You understand? Because we can't be measured, not numbered. But they, they have an idea because they know we outnumber them all. That's why this number is so outrageous that you see here. It is biblical. Okay? Now look at that. Look at the graph. Look at the mind. Look at the map they put together. Top 1%, 19.2%. Top 10%, 65%. Bottom 90%. Hmm. You see even the word that they are using? Bottom. Where we at? At the bottom. You see that thing right there? Bottom 90% is, they get, they get 35% of whatever is left. That lets you know, the nations know who they have in place. The nations are fully aware who they have enslaved the 12 tribes of the nation of Israel. Give me Lamentations 2. You understand? Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 1. Come on. How had the Lord covered the daughter of Zion with the cloud in his anger uh -huh. and cast down from heaven unto the earth the beauty of Israel? Read. And remembered not his footstool in the day of his anger. You see what he says is that he comes down from heaven unto the earth, the beauty of Israel. So the Lord, he took us from a high estate when we were moving and he put us down at the bottom of all nations. That is what the numbers are saying here. Nine, but the, the bottom 90%. We are at the bottom. We are that bottom 90%. We are, only, we are only dealing with the crumbs because this 35% is not going to one individual. Is going to the what 
is going to the 25 million people that uh, Mutuko Kleku is going to tell us about. This 35%, we, we have to share it. The 25 million people must share this 35%. That's the reality of the situation. That's the number. Okay, watch this. Right. So now, uh, let me know when you have it. Okay, if you can see, let me know. You can see it, sir. Oh, crazy. So read the title of the book. Apartheid, mm -hmm. the story of a dispossessed people by Mutsuko Peko. Okay, the story of a dispossessed people by Mutsuko Peko. Watch this. Okay, so I want you to read. Yes, I want you to read what you are looking at here. Let me see if I cannot uh, take this down a little bit. Read the top, read the title. Number 15, Bantu stands a plot against Africans. You see that thing, Bantu stands, these are reservations now. Bantu stands a plot against Africans. Okay, so now watch this. Read that. The highlighted part. Today, the racist policy of the Bantu stands involves not only white supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation of the indigenous African people. But the land question is central. So now, these, the Bantu stands, the Bantu stands was created because of what? The land. Because they wanted access to the whole land. That's why they created Bantu Stand. Give me the book of Isaiah, okay? Give me the book of Isaiah chapter 5. Give me Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 8. Mm -hmm. Woe unto them that join house to house. Come on. That lay field to field till there be no place. Till there be what? That they Till there be no place. Till there be no place. So it says, what well, unto them that join house to house? Because they joined us house to, they joined themselves house to house, that they that, uh, steer and lay field to field, meaning the land. Okay, because the land is in question here. That's why they created Bantu stand. Go ahead. That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. You see that thing? That they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. So what they did is they created Bantu stand and separated us so that they can be placed alone. You see that thing? That's why they created reservation. These, the system of Bantu stand, okay, which is the Land Act of 1913, guess what? It was put in place for what? To separate us, to give us the worst, the worst, uh, the worst places to dwell in, and they took the best places upon the earth. You understand that? Um, watch this. It says, that they may be placed alone in the midst of the earth. Because what did they do? How, when they created Bantu stands, they found the land that didn't belong to them and they took it from the inhabitants, which is us. Watch this. Give me, give me the book of Proverbs 22 verse 28. Proverbs 22 verse 28. Proverbs 22 verse 28. Mm -hmm. Remove not the ancient landmark which thy fathers have said. You see that thing? It says, remove not. Don't remove the ancient landmark. But that when they arrived, that's what they did. They came over here, they removed the ancient landmark. Because guess what? That was the land that, yes, we was running. Yes, we were coming from Jerusalem. But when we got here, we started, we set up things. That's why the Lord said, build here houses and dwell in them. We build houses upon land that we own. But somebody else came and took the land from us. They took it by force. They remove the ancient landmark which our fathers have set. You see that thing? That's what they done there. All right, read that part again. Read the read the the, the paragraph in the book. Today, the racist policy of the Bantu stands involves not only white supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation of the indigenous African people, but the land is in but the land question is central. So what you want to notice out of this is that it says the racist policy. You see that part right there? The racist policy. So they had to come up with a scheme, a way for them to do what? They, they came up with a policy to create this Bantu stand. 
because this whole thing was 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 based on what white supremacy. That's why I said the racist policy of Bantu Stan. So they had to come together, you understand, um, to see how they are going to be, when they get the land, what are they going to do upon the land? They're going to use what? White supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation. When, once they get access to the land. You see that part? So they had to literally sit down and say, okay, what are we going to do? What plans are we going to come? What plans are we going to come up with in order for us to have access to this land? Watch this. Let's get the definition of. Um, let's get the definition of imperialism. Okay, imperialism. We're going to get the definition of the word imperialism. Okay, read that. Imperialism. Imperialism. Noun. A policy of extending a country's power and influence through colonization, use of military force or other means. You see that thing? Imperialism is just a policy of extending a country's power. So they set up policies, racist policies like the Bantu stand, a policy of extending a country's power and influence through colonization. So before they will colonize, before, before they'll be able to take over the, the actual land itself, they have to what? They have to set up structures before they come up to come and take the land. They have to sit down and plan. Once we take the land, yes, we want to go and get the land. But once we get the land, what are we going to do? Once we get the land and the people upon the land. So they, they have to set up policies. So the policy that they said was what? Um, the system of white supremacy, they brought the Bible, okay? And they brought what? Political oppression and economic exploitation. Those are the policies. You understand? That is called imperialism. Guess what? The first thing was that they would take over the land to colonize, they were colonized by force. That's why it says through colonization. First, they had to colonize you first. You understand? But once they've colonized you, Guess what they're gonna do? They're gonna apply these policies, these policies that are gonna come with. Watch this. But before they do all of that, they have to sit down and plan it out. Give me the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 23. Watch this. You know what? Let's use this word right here. Give me Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Daniel 8, verse 25. Okay. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Read. And through his policy, through his what? Also, and through his policy. So through the white man's policy, okay, through his policy, the, the policy of what? The policy of, let's go back to that part again in the book, today's racist. Today, the racist policy of the Bantu stands involves not only white supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation, of the indigenous African people, Israelite. but the land, Come but on. the land question is central. You see, so the whole thing, this whole thing is about the land. But for them to get the land, these are things that they have to set up. They have to set up policies in order for what. Once they get the land, these are the policies that they will apply once they have access to the land through colonization. You understand? So imperialism will come on top, and what? And um, capitalism will come on top of that once they have the land. But these policies they have to sit down together behind closed doors to plan out how they're gonna what they're gonna overthrow. So but those policies is what white supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation. That's what he's talking about. Okay. All right, read that again, Daniel 8:25. Daniel chapter 8, verse 25. Read. And through his policy also. He shall cause craft to prosper in his hand. You see that thing? He will cause craft to prosper in his hand. He's going to use craftiness. Go ahead. And he shall magnify himself in his heart. Mm -hmm. And by peace shall, shall destroy many. And by peace he's going to destroy many. By peace he's going to destroy many. Because guess what? They had to sit down, like I mentioned, they had to sit down and come up with his uh, oppressive policies on how they are going to what they're going to oppress the people once they have access to the land. 
But before they could uh, apply those, they had to come to get the land by force. That's what they did. And after that, guess what they brought us? They brought us the system of white supremacy, which is what? Religion. Christianity. Okay, watch this. Daniel, Daniel chapter 11, verse 23. Daniel chapter 11, verse 23. Mm -hmm. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. You see that thing? For he shall. It says, and after the league made with him, the league, that's going into the Berlin Conference, the League of Nations, the Berlin Conference of the 1800s. It says, after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. Go ahead. He shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with the small people. He shall become strong with the small people. Because guess what? It was 30 people. Listen, 30 million. 30 million people. 30 million people in South Africa, right? But out of those 30 million, only 4 million hold the, the, own the whole 87% of the land. The 4 million people, they own 87% of the land. That's why he says, and shall become strong with a small people. Jump down to verse 27. Daniel chapter 11, verse 27. Come on. And both of these kings, these kings' hearts, shall be to, dis, to do mischief. Mm -hmm. And they shall speak lies at one table. You see that thing? They shall speak lies at one table. They shall speak lies at one table. The Berlin Conference. It was headed by the German Chancellor Otto von Bismarck. Okay. So they spoke lies at one table. When they they when they were cooking up those what those policies, those oppressive policies to oppress us. Understand that? That's why he says they shall he says, and both of these kings' hearts shall be to do mischief. That has always been the objective. And they shall speak lies at one table. That table of lies, mm -hmm. we talk about that. One of those examples is what? The Berlin Conference. You understand? The Berlin Conference. The, the, the Balfour Declaration. The Balfour Declaration, yes, that's part of what? That's part of the mischief. That's part of the policies that they have in their mind. 1948, when they put white people in our land, under the 1917 Balfour Declaration. Yes, the same thing. That It falls under this right here. Okay? Jump back. Jump up to verse 24 now. Verse 24, he shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. You see right there? Right there, right there, right there. He says, you see, remember, they will come together to put together these policies and on one table, meaning what? One agreement. Because if you look at the pictures of, um, of the Berlin Conference, you see them sitting down, some were sitting around the table, some were standing, looking over the continent of Africa, deciding how they're going to divide it up for the among themselves. You see that thing? So he says, he shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the provinces. The fattest places of the provinces because Africa is the fattest land on earth. Read the part again, verse 24. Daniel chapter 11, verse 24. He shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province. Mm -hmm. And he shall do that which is which his fathers have not done. Come on. All his fathers' fathers. Wait. He shall scatter among them the prey. He shall what? Spoil. He shall scatter among them the prey. We are the prey. You we are the prey because guess what? They, they divided us. That's why it says he shall scatter among them the prey. They scatter us, they divide us. That's why they created Bantu stand to divide so that they can conquer us. In, up, and, in, and what? And set up those political systems, you understand? Those economic systems, exploitation, and white supremacy, which is apartheid. That's what they done there. Read on. And spoil and, and spoil. riches. They're going to spoil us. You're not gonna, they're going to take our riches too. Go ahead. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the stronghold, even for a time. You see that thing? So now what we're reading is that he shall scatter the he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches. 
So that's what the Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, that's what they were doing here. They are still doing it today. Okay, watch this. Hmm. Give me, jump down to verse, um, read verse 28, Daniel chapter 11, verse 28 now. Daniel chapter 11, verse 8. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. Mm -hmm. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. You see what they did? It says, then shall he return to his own land with great riches. The riches they got upon the land. You understand? Because the, 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 the whole objective was to get access to the land. Okay, let's go back to the book now. Okay, read that paragraph again. Today, the racist policy of the Bantu stands involves not only white supremacy, political oppression, and economic exploitation of the indigenous African people, but the land question is central. The land question is central because the whole objective was the land, because they knew what was upon the land. Go ahead. The total population of South Africa is 30 million people. Of these, 4 million are white settlers. You see that thing? So out of 30 million people, guess what? 4 million is white settlers, meaning imposters. The people that came to do exploits upon the land because the whole thing that the only, the reason why they came was because of what? The land. Okay, keep reading. It says the total population is as of these, of these 4 million. Of these 4 million are white settlers. 3% of the population are Indians, while the vast majority of the population are indigenous Africans. Mm -hmm. So now, 30 million people in South Africa, right? 4 million own 87% of the land. That's the settlers, meaning what? White people that came over here. They've been here for over 500 years. Go ahead. These settlers have Africans, these settlers have allocated to themselves 87% of the total land area. Read. While 25 million Africans are expected to occupy the homeland or Bantu stands, the remaining 13% of the land. You see that? Land. So now, these, these 4 million that occupy 87% of the total land area, they've given the land to themselves. And the rest, 13%, was is given to what? Is given to us. So guess what? They put us in reservations, Bantu stands and divided us and applied those policies upon us. White supremacy, which is religion, Christianity, political oppression, and so and economic exploitation. That is what they are doing. And social exploitation as well. You understand? Because that's what's going on right now. Social exploitation. They are exploiting us socially. That is what these people are doing. Watch this. Give me, give me Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. You know what? Hmm. Before you get me there, before you get me there, let's get the definition of the word capitalism. Capitalism. Because remember, the land, the land, the land has always been the key. You know what? Let's keep reading on this. Hmm, I'm getting carried away. Okay. Let's keep reading the article, keep reading the book. The white farmers in South Africa occupy 92.2 million hectares, which amounts to 75% of the total land surface of the country. You see, 92.2 million hectares, which amounts to 75%. 92.2 million hectares is owned by 4 million. Okay, come on. Of these white-owned farms, 106 and 1 live 100, off the 106,000 and 1. 106,000 and 1. Go ahead. Of these white owned farms, 106,000 and 1 live off the exploitation of cheap black labor. You see that part right there? It says 106,000 and 1 live off the exploitation of cheap black labor. Because guess what? Hmm. Watch this. Give me Second Peter two, Second Peter chapter two. Okay, Second Peter chapter two. We're gonna start at verse two. Second Peter. Second Peter chapter two, verse two. Read that. 
Second Peter chapter 2, verse 2. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, mm -hmm. by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. So the truth will be see, it will be evil spoken of because when we bring in this out, they're gonna say no, that's racist and all of that. Keep reading. And through covetousness. Through what? They. And through covetousness. And through covetousness. Through covetousness. So the white man and all his friends, his allies, guess what? Through covetousness, they're gonna do what? They're gonna get access to the land. That's why they own 92.2 million hectares, which amounts to 75% of the total land surface of the country. So what is that called? Covetousness. Remember what, go back to Daniel chapter 11. Daniel chapter 11 and verse, Daniel chapter 11 and verse 23, verse 24. Daniel chapter 11, verse 24. No, no, you know what? I'm sorry. Read verse 28. Verse 28, that's what I want. Verse 28. Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. Then shall he return to his land with great riches. Mm -hmm. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant, and he shall do exploits and return to his own land. You see, you see that part? Then shall he return to his own land with great riches, and his heart shall be against the holy covenant. His mind shall be against the holy covenant. Because guess what? Through covetousness, that's how they got access to the land. It was because of covetousness they had access to the land now. They own 87% of the land. 75% of that, you understand, is what? Is attributed to what? Is attributed to the housing and all of that and farms as well. Read that part again, verse 28. Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. Mm -hmm. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. You see that thing? Economic exploitation. Economic exploitation. Watch this. So there's 87% of the land they have. 75% 75, 75 they own it. The rest is attributed to farms that they own. Okay, and guess what? Who's working the farm? Cheap black people, our people. That's why it says they will live off the exploitation of cheap black labor. That's what we're reading right there. Watch this. Give me, let's get the definition now. Let's get, no, keep reading, keep reading the article, keep reading the book. Let's finish that up. 68.5% of these farms are bigger than 80 hectares and 23.9% are over 868 hectares. Mm, mm, mm. You see that part in Daniel 11? And he shall do exploits and return to his own land. Some have remained here. You understand? Some have remained here. Read on. The Bantu stands or reserves of the trans guy created by the South African face fascist, fascist in Come accordance on. with their policy of, by really? this South African fascist in accordance with their policy of separate development. Of what? Harbor 41% with their policy of separate development. Separate development. That's what apartheid is called. Separateness. Okay? Separate development. That's the Bantu stand, separate development. Go ahead. Harbor 41% of the African population and comprises only 13.5 million hectares. You see that thing? It says 41% of the African population and comprises only 13.5 million hectares, while they have 92.2 .2 million hectares. That's heavy right there. We only occupy 13.5 million hectares of land. While the foreigners, which is the white people, Dutch, British, Germany, you understand, Europe, what are they? They occupy 92.2 .2 million hectares. So when you hear our, our brothers and sisters in the world in politics and all of that talk about land, we want the land and all of they really don't understand the heaviness of the situation.
situation. They don't get it. They don't get, they don't understand what's going on behind the scenes. Because the hand of the most High God is there only. Okay, they don't get it. Okay, let's get the definition of, I want to get the definition of capitalism. Capitalism. Let's get the definition of the word capitalism. Okay, read that. The definition of capitalism. Noun, an economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. Mm, that's some heavy stuff right there. Isn't that what's going on now? Because the state don't own nothing. We are living under the doctrine of capitalism and colonialism and imperialism. Read the part again. The definition? The definition of capitalism. An economic and political system in which a country's trade and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. So the, the state don't own anything. So it's an, an economic and political system in which a country's trade, trade, okay? A country's trade, import and export, and industry are controlled by private owners for profit rather than by the state. The state, they are just what? Is, the state is like a is like a pawn on a chessboard. The, the state is designed to be the face of the private of the private banker. That's what the state is. The states don't have any money. The private bankers are the ones that have money and they own the state. They tell the state what to do. They are the one they control all of that. Okay, watch this. Give me, give me the book of Jeremiah. Okay, because capitalism is about what? Capitalism is about profit. Capitalism is about capitalism is about profit. Keeping the poor poor and keeping the rich richer. You understand? And exploiting the poor for the benefit of the rich. That's what capitalism is all about. Give me the book of Jeremiah two verse thirteen. Okay. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. That's capitalism. Jeremiah 2, verse 13. Read that. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 13. Read. For my people have committed two evils. No, no, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, no. Jeremiah 22. I'm sorry. Jeremiah 22. Not 2, verse 13. Jeremiah 22, verse 13. Jeremiah chapter 22, verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. That's the white man, okay? That's the white man. He built his house by unrighteousness. Go ahead. And his chambers by wrong. His chambers by wrong, because what? That's why they have the chambers of commerce. Okay? Economic system. Economic exploitation. Read on. That useth his neighbor's service without wages. Uh -huh. That what? That useth his neighbor's service without wages. Right. And giveth him not for his work. You see that part right there? He uses his neighbor's service without wages and giveth him not for his work. That's capitalism. Cheap, cheap black labor. Okay? That's what Mutuku Pegu said. Mutuku Pegu said, he says, that the question was the land, but who worked the land? Black people. For cheap black, for cheap labor. We are being exploited because our forefathers were not getting paid. And if they were, they couldn't do nothing with the wages that they were getting. You couldn't build a house with that. Nothing. Okay, read that again, verse 13. Jeremiah 22, verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, mm -hmm. that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and give it him not for his work. That's what's going on right now. They are using them, they, they are using our service there, but they are not paying us for, for the service for the work we do for them. They are giving us what crowd. Because if if you have to really think about it, if let's say at work you earn you earn ten thousand, okay, that means because of they have the spirit of covetousness. You, you, that means you being there at work, 
you are definitely you are bringing what you are bringing four to five times what they are paying because they move with the spirit of capital okay they are making three to they're making four to five times because especially with these consulting firms because i used to work for one consulting firm and what they do is when they send you to a client when you get there you are billing them you are billing for your time so whatever you are doing you have to you have to jot it down and write it down okay they are billing you for your time so what happens is that they'll tell you okay um as an example your rate per hour is i don't know it's 100 bucks let's say but the client is not billed 100 bucks for your time for your head no the client per hour was pay, was paid a thousand bucks yeah and it is based on rank those that are higher level rank per hour the client is paying two thousand three thousand per hour so wherever they are giving us those are just crumbs what they are giving us is crumbs okay give me james chapter 5 verse 4 james chapter 5 verse 4 james chapter 5 verse 4 behold the higher of the laborers who have reaped down your fields the what is not the higher of your laborers you see that thing who have is that the higher of the laborers we are the highest that we are the laborers that are higher but we getting paid nothing go ahead the higher of the laborers who have reaped down your fields we have reaped down your fields but is it uh, is it their fields no it's ours but now they took the land from us and we work the land that belongs to us and the fruit belong to them we don't which is of you kept back by fruit you see that thing? They, they've kept back they've kept back the money that they're supposed to pay us for they kept it back by fraud because how is it fraud because whatever they're giving us is not the proportional to the amount of what we do for them that's why it's a fraudulent thing it's fraudulent what they are doing they are exploiting us economic exploitation cheap labor that's what they are doing. Give me second Ezra 16 verse 45. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 45. Second Ezra chapter 15 verse 45. One six, one six. 1645. Second Ezra chapter 16 verse 45. And therefore they that labor, labor in vain. You see that thing? Therefore, they that labor, labor in vain, because they don't pay us what truly is supposed to be given to us. They are giving us crumbs. Okay, that's what's going on. That's why the thing that the, the, the 2012, what happened in Maritana, it was because of wages. Because our people, they could hard for and say, listen, we need more money. We've been working in the mines and all of that. We are mining gold here. We are mining such and such. Guess what? But you're getting, you're paying us nothing. We cannot, we cannot even build houses with the money you give us. We're still living in shacks, but yes, we, we have to work in the mines. You understand? Read that part again, verse 45. Second is just the 16, verse 45. And therefore, they that labor, labor in vain. Mm -hmm. They that labor, labor in vain. Watch this. Now, let's get let's get the definition of colonialism remember imperialism is economic policies that are set up you understand so capitalism is what is economic and political systems that what that are what that 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 are controlled by private individuals regarding trade in industry you understand regarding trade in industry where for instance when you look at the dti the department of trade in industry that's just a, it's just a smoke screen. The people that own the funds that go to that department is the private bankers. It's not the state. So they run us by capitalism, okay, which is what? Enforcing economic and political systems upon us. You understand? And guess what? They extend their power because they have power elsewhere through what? Through imperialism. That's what we are reading. Read imperialism definition again. 
the definition of imperialism. Read. Now, a policy of extending a country's power and influence through, colon through colonization, use of military force or other means. So we're going to deal with that. We're going to deal with colonization. So imperialism is what? It, they come with policies, but they are extending their power and influence through colonization. So imperialism, guess what? Works hand in hand with colonialism. Because colonialism, they have to what? They have to come and conquer you physically through military might. Okay? And then once they've done that, they're going to use their imperial policies to do what? To gain the country's power and influence. Then they use capitalism to enrich the rich, to impoverish the poor. That's the key. That's what, how they do it. Okay, let's get the definition of colonialism. Read that. The definition of colonialism. Now, a policy or practice of argue, of acquiring uh -huh. of acquiring full or partial political control over another country. Come on, occupying it with settlers and exploiting it economically. You see what they've done? So colonialism, on the other hand, is a policy is a, or practice of acquiring full or partial political control over another country. So colonialism, guess what they do? They come with, where they come with what? They come with guns blazing. That's colonialism. They come with guns blazing. And guess what they do? Once they occupy it through violence, they live with the inhabitants. They don't just occupy it and then they run it on remote. No, no. Colonialism is that they come and take it by force and they live with the people that they've taken the land from. That's what's going on now. And they take the majority of the land from the people that they, they've taken the land from. Okay, give me Micah. Give me Micah 2. Okay, Micah chapter 2, verse 1. Micah 2, verse 1. And the reason why they had, to, they had to do that, by the way, the reason why they are doing that, they are the colonialism, they have to they have to take full they say what? Uh, the policy or practice of acquiring full or partial political control. They don't have partial political control, they have full political control because guess what? They have what? They have the spirit of capitalism. So they don't just do it half. No, no, they want all. The remaining is just, you know, so that we can be, because they cannot get rid of us. Who's going to work? Who's going to be the slave? So that's why they have to make sure that they put us somewhere so that we can be able to work our own land and they eat the food. Okay? Micah 2 verse 1. Read that. Micah chapter 2 verse 1. Read. Woe to them that devise iniquity. Mm -hmm and work evil upon their beds. Come on. When the morning is light, they practice it because it is in the power of their hand. That's exactly what they've done. That's what, exactly what the Dutch did. That's exactly what the British did on this side of the earth, South Africa. That's what they've done. That's the same thing they did in Namibia. Okay? The Germans, because the Germans are over there in Namibia. Same thing they did in, uh, in Madagascar. The French. The French did that. Okay? Read on. Verse two. One, because this is the this is how, when they sit down around the table of lies to be what one accord. That's why it says in the more when the morning is light they practice it because it is in the power of their head. Yes. Next verse. Watch this. Micah chapter two verse two. And they covet fields, and take them by violence. You see that thing? They covet fields. Remember it says through covetous practices. Covetous practices, covetousness. All this, give me that in 2 Peter 2, because I never finished that. 2 Peter 2, verse 2 again, verse 3. 2 Peter 2, verse 3. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 3. Read. And through covetousness, and through covetousness, shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. Shall what? Shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you. You see that with feigned words. What are the feigned words? Guess what? They say, no, we're here to, uh, to civilize you. 
that was the that that has always been the the punchline. You know, we're we're going to civilize you because you people are uncivilized. We need to civilize you. That's what he's talking about when he says with faint words or what we are going to invest in your country. We're going to give you foreign aid. That's the faint words. But behind it is what war is in his mind because he wants the land because he knows what's on the land because the white man reads this book. How do you think he knows where to find the gold, where to find the diamond, where to find the platinum, where to find the oil? How do you think he knows that? He reads the Bible. Because the Bible is a map of where the treasures are sitting. The white man reads this Bible. Understand that. Go back to Micah 2 verse 2. Micah chapter 2 verse 2. And they covered fields and take them by violence. Mm -hmm. And houses and take them away. Come on. So we oppress a man in his house, even a man in his heritage. You see that thing? So they covered our fields. That's why they took 87% of South Africa. 87% of South Africa belongs to them. Okay. And 13% belongs to us. That's why you see the way we live? We live like rats packed on top of each other. Yes. Then they and they covered fields it's because this man has got the spirit of covetousness and take them out and take them by violence. Okay, read the definition of imperialism. Imperialism, read that. The definition of imperialism a policy of extending a country's power and influence through colonization, through what use of military. Through colonization. Through colonization, come on. Use of military force. Use of what? Or other means. Use of military force. Use of military force. That's why he says, Micah 2 verse 2 again. Micah chapter 2 verse 2. Read. And they covered fields uh -huh. and take them by violence. You see that thing? Military force. They covered our fields, meaning the land. That's what the Berlin conference happened. That's what the, the, the Balfour Declaration thing happened. Why? Because of what? Covetousness. And how did they take the land? They took the land through violence. Okay, come on. And, and take them by violence. Uh -huh. And houses. And what? And take them away. And houses. And houses. Because we had houses. Because where was the houses sitting? Upon the land which they took away from us by force. And houses and houses. That's why they had to take us away, away from our houses. They put us in reservation. Okay, come on. And houses and take them away. Really? So they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. He says they oppress a man and his house, even a man and his heritage. Because they oppressed us when they took away our houses and our heritage. What is our heritage? the land and the resources upon the land. Not only that, but they took away from us what? Our identity and our culture. Okay, watch this. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 33. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 33. Land in all thy labors shall remain in and thou shalt be fully oppressed and crushed only. Yo, you sound like you were in a bottle. Could you read that again? Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. The fruits of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be fully oppressed and crushed only. So now, the fruit of our land, guess what? Because remember, it says, he covered fields and take them by violence, and houses, and took them away. He oppressed a man and his house, even a man and his heritage, a man and his inheritance. Because the fruit of, our, of the fruit of the land, that's our inheritance. You understand? And guess what? And all thy labors, because guess what they did? Let's go back to the book. Okay. I don't want y'all to forget that thought. Let's go back to the book. 
let's go back to the book. Um, read that part when it says the total population of South Africa. The total no, no. population. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, the next part with orange. It says of these white owned farms, come on. Of these white owned farms, 106,001 live off the exploitation of cheap black labor. You see that thing? The exploitation of cheap black labor. So what you want to see here, go back to Deuteronomy 28, verse 33 again. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 33. Read. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors. And all our what? Move. And all thy labors. Cheap black labor. Cheap labor. You understand? The exploitation of cheap black labor is letting you know who's the what? Who's the 90% that is at the bottom that only has access to 35% of the so called wealth that we're reading in Mail and, on Mail and Guardian? What the article who was reading on Mail and Guardian? Yes. It says, The fruit of thy land, because the white man will come and take the fruit of our land, and all thy labors, cheap black labor, exploitation of our sons and daughters, fathers and mothers. Read. Shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up. They are eating up the fruit of our land. They are exploiting us. You understand? Economically, socially, they are exploiting us. Politically, they are exploiting us. Come on. And thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. We shall be only oppressed and crushed always. Watch this. You know what? There's something I want to touch on, actually. Okay? Because remember, they exploited us. They took us. They, they came together to set up those policies before they took the land, right? After they did that, now they came through colonialism by taking the land from us by force. And guess what? And, and, and applying their, those political, um, political, social, economic exploitation policies to do what? To make sure that we become merchandisers to them. We become the prey. So now we work, we work on our land and we, we, we gather the fruits of the land, but for their benefit. You understand that? And once they, and once they, have, they have the fruits of the land, once they've gathered all the fruits of the land, guess what they do? Go back to, go, go back to Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. Daniel 11, verse 28. Once they gather all the fruits of the land and they've exploited us with cheap labor, this is what they do. Daniel 11, verse 28. Read that. Daniel chapter 11 verse 28. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. You see what they do? Once they exploit us, economically, socially, politically, you understand? Guess what they do? And what? And, re and, and religiously. Because they exploit us through what? Christianity. That's why it says they shall speak faint with faint words. Guess what they will do now with that? Verse 28, one more again. Daniel chapter 11, verse 28. Read. Then shall he return into his land with great riches. He shall return into his land with great riches. Go ahead. The riches they got from us by exploiting our, our land, the land, the resources upon the land, and the people upon the land with cheap labor. Read. And his heart shall be against the holy covenant. The holy covenant. And because what? Hold on. Because the holy covenant says, all the riches, all the promises that are upon this earth, they are given to us. Moreover, the law says, thou shalt not covet your neighbor, your neighbor's wife, or anything that belongs to thy neighbor. Guess what? They are going against the holy covenant. Right. And he shall do exploits. They exploited us economically, socially, politically, and religiously. Right. And return to his own land. And return to his own land to decorate their own cities, to enrich their own nation with what? With cheap labor by exploiting us and our sons and our daughters. Watch this. Give me the book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Here's the next step. Because now, you remember, this, this is a vicious cycle, okay? It's colonialism, imperialism, and capitalism. So they, they will just keep spinning. When they want more, guess what they do? They go there and conquer, okay? 
and they, they what they apply the system of imperialism and capitalism. Then when they want more, they do the same. They go there, they conquer, so on and so forth. Once they've conquered every, because look, look, they own 87% of the land of South Africa. Watch this. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. Wait. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. And thou shalt come down very low. Because they are the stranger. This is not their land. They are the stranger. They are the Indians. The Dutch, the British, the French, the Portuguese, okay, the American, European, Chinese, Japanese. They are the strangers. They are the foreigners. Read. He shall lend to thee. He shall what? He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to us. Guess what? What are they lending to us? Because where they get the riches from? They got the riches from the land they exploited, which is our land and the resources upon the land and the people upon it. So now it says, he shall lend to thee. So all the banks, okay, the banks that they own, the, the, your, your, your banks that we have in South Africa, you've got now, you've got what? You take it a step further, you go a higher level, you've got the World Bank, okay? You've got the IMF. You see that thing, which is owned by the U.S. So they don't own anything. Everything that they have, they stolen. Now, the riches that they have stolen from us, guess what they do? Now they are lending to you now. Mm -hmm. Read that part again, verse 44. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 44. Read. He shall lend to thee. He shall lend to you. And thou shalt not lend to him. We, are, we shall not lend to him. Do we own banks? No. Do we lend money? Do we lend money, money to other countries? Do we provide foreign aid to other nations? No, we don't do that. We don't do that. We don't. That's why it says um, capitalism is where it's owned what? It's owned by private individuals. That's where they, and they own the state. Okay? They own the state. Verse 44, again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 44. Read. He shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. He shall be the head, and thou shalt be the tail. That's the current situation that we're in right now. That's the situation that we're in. Capitalism. You see that thing? Give me Proverbs 22, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. We're still dealing with, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 7. Read. The rich ruleth over the poor. The, the what? The rich ruleth over the poor. The rich ruleth over the poor. Come on. And the borrower is a servant to the, to the lender. That's the key right there. The borrower is a servant to the lender. That's some heavy stuff right there. That's the same thing that Moses is saying. The borrower is a servant to the lender because we are servants to them. You understand? We are servants to them because they lend us money. We don't do it. We don't. It's not the other way around. But they are using our own money to do it. They are using our own resources to do it. That's what's going on. They are using our own resources to do it. They steal from us and they use the same money they've stolen from us. They lend it. They lend that money to us. And we become servants unto them. Okay? Watch this. Give me... Let's go back to the book. Um, Okay, I want this one now. The same book. Because they have complete control over us now. They have dominion. Before you get, give me Nehemiah 9, 36. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 36. Read. Behold, 
we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. You see what he's saying? We are servants. Remember what he read in Proverbs 22 verse 7. It says, we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof, and the good thereof, to eat the fruit of the land and the good of the fruit of the land. Guess what? Now we are seven in the same land that was given to us by the Most High God through our forefathers. Now we are seven in the same land because now they lend to us, we don't do it to them. Okay, come on. Verse 37. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us. Because of our sins. Now he's telling you why, why they have dominion over us. Why we are seven in the land that belongs to us. And the Lord has set up king. A white man. He is the king that the Lord has set over us. Okay. He yielded much increase unto the king whom thou has set over us. Because of our sins. Now to go back to Deuteronomy 20. We're coming back here. Deuteronomy 28 verse 33 again. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 33. The fruits of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Okay, you see that part right there? When it says, shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. Because this nation that we know not is the king in Nehemiah 9.37, the kings that the Lord has set over us because of our king, because of our sin. Also, they have dominion over our foes. So the, the nation that we know not, that will eat the fruit of our land, and they're going to oppress and crush us always, they are the kings that the Lord has set over us because of our sin. Go back to Nehemiah 19, now, again. Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 37. Come on. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. Also, they have dominion over our bodies. You see that part right there? They have dominion over our bodies. They control it. They control your movement. Anything and everything you do. What you eat, how you eat, where you eat. You understand? Where you live, where you go to school, where you go to work. You understand what type of car you can buy, what type of house you can live in, what to wear, how you educate your children. They have dominion over your body. They control, they control food, they control water, they control shelter, they control education and religion. That's why I said they have dominion over your body. Where you get buried, they decide that. Okay, come on. And over our cattle uh -huh. at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. We are in great distress. They have it says what over our cattle. Cattle goes into resources at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Watch this. Let's read the book now. Okay, this is the next page. Let me see. Yes, this is the next page. So I want you to read when it says there are too many people. There are too many people in the Union of South Africa who harbor silly ideas about the rightful freedom of the natives. So now stop right there. You see that part when it says there are too many people in the Union of South Africa. The Union of South Africa was in Cape Town, was run by Bures. Okay, come on. And the, the, and the Bures and the, and the British. It was some kind of a dual thing going on. Read. In the opinion of the majority, the day the Bantu or African gains his freedoms will, the, will mark the end of white civilization on the African continent. Now some heavy stuff right there. Woo! Read that part again. In my opinion, in the opinion. In the opinion of the majority, the day the Bantu or African gains his freedoms will mark the end of white civilization on the African continent. Now you see this part right there. He just he just narrowed it to the continent. No, no, no. 
He says, in the opinion of the majority, the day the Bantu or African gained his freedom will mark the end of white civilization on the continent of the on the on the African continent. No, no, the whole earth. Give me that in second Ezra chapter six. Second Ezra chapter six, verse seven. Second Ezra chapter six, verse seven. Come on. Then answered I and said, What shall be the part of the thunder of the times? Or when shall be the end of the first and the beginning of it that followeth? Wait. And he said unto me, From Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Wait. For Esau is the end of the world. Come on. And Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So now uh, the Lord is explaining to Ezra with the, symb the symbolism or the similitude be behind the birth of Jacob and Esau. When Jacob was holding the heel of Esau, was marking the end of Esau's rule in the last day. So what we are reading when it says, for Esau is the end of the world and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth, that's what Mukuku Seku is saying. But he just, he just uh, confined it to the African continent. You understand? But it actually, according to the most High God, is the whole earth. Okay, go back to the book. In the opinion of the majority, the day the Bantu or African gains his freedoms will mark the end of white civilization on the African continent. It says, we'll mark the end. The end, he didn't say white power. You see that word he's using? It says, we'll end, we'll mark the end of white civilization, not white power. That's some heavy stuff he's saying right there. Okay, he says he will mark the end of white civilization on the African continent. That's some heavy stuff. That's the topic for another day right there. Okay, watch this. So, what I went over is what? We went over the, the, the wealth gap, okay? And how the wealth gap was, was, was maintained. You understand? The plot behind the, 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 the wealth gap that exists in South Africa, okay? That's why now we have a huge generational gap, wealth gap between us and everyone else. You understand? But now the question is, should we be worrying about generational wealth right now? Because that's the question. Should we be worrying about generational wealth? We need to find out if we should be worried about that right now. Watch this. Give me the book of, uh, before you get this, before you go there. Hmm. Let's go to the book of Genesis, okay? Genesis chapter three. Genesis 3, verse 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree, of which I commanded thee, say, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. So now this is the judgment that came upon Adam. It says, because thou was hearken unto the voice of thy wife, because you are listening to your wife. Okay? Don't be worshipping the woman. You understand? Don't be buried in the coach. Okay? Read that again. Verse 17. Genesis chapter 3, verse 17. Go ahead. And unto Adam he said, because thou was hearken unto the voice of thy wife, Read. and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and in sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. You see that thing? It says, Cursed is the ground for thy sake. Meaning what? Adam has to work hard to get the basic necessities in life. That's what we read in Nehemiah 9. They have dominion over our body. So the fruit of the land that we reap is not for us, but it's for them. That's why it says it yielded much increase. And to the kings whom the Lord has set over us because of our sins. Next verse, verse 18. Watch this. 
verse 18. Mm-hmm. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. Come on, watch this. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. You see that thing? In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread. Meaning what? We have to work hard now. If you want to get anything, you must work hard. You must work extra hard to get whatever it is that you want. We must work hard now. Because during the time of Genesis, we didn't have to do that. We didn't have to do it. The kingdom was handed over to us on a silver plate. The most I saw that it corrupted us. Mm -mm, I'm not doing this again. Now you you must work for it. That's why he says, in the sweat of thy face, Shall thou eat bread? Why? Well, what did Adam do? Adam listened to his wife. The command was, Adam, you listen to me. Your wife listens to you. He decided, Mm-mm. when he was buried into whatever, guess what happened? He lost focus. Go ahead. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread till thou return unto the ground. Until you die. Come on. For out of it was thou taken. For out of it was thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. You see that thing? So because you see, the reason why now we have to work hard is because Adam listened to Eve. Eve and her foolishness. Okay, so brothers, you better you better examine yourself on this one right here. Watch this. Give me. Give me the book of Psalms 104. Psalms 104, verse 21. Psalms 104, verse 21. Watch this. Psalms 104, verse 21. Mm -hmm. The young lions roll after their prey and seek their meat from God. You see that the young lions roar after their prey. Because they know that the only way they're going to be able to get, they're going to be able to eat, they must do what? They must go hunting. They must go hunting. That is what we just read in Genesis 3, verse 17 and 19. We, they must go hunting. Likewise with us, in order for us to eat, we must go hunting and seek their meat from God. And the Lord is the one that is going to give that meat to us when we labor. Okay, come on. Verse 22. The sun arises. They gather themselves together. And lay them down in their tents. You see that thing? It says the sun rises. They gather themselves together. They gather themselves to do what? You ever seen the lion? They go hunting. Okay. They gather the prey. They eat. They eat. They pass out. It says and lay them down in their tents. Because what? They come. It says the sun arises. They gather themselves to do what? To go to what? To go to hunt. You understand? And when the day is done, when they are done hunting, they've eaten. They what? They will be late. They, you'll, you'll find lions sleeping. Because what did they do? They just went hunting. They ate and then they sleep. Okay, you know, watch this. Come on. Man goes forth unto his work. Mm-hmm. And verse 23. Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. You see that thing? is a man goeth forth unto his work. Meaning what? He wakes up in the morning and does what? He says, go to his work and to his labor until the evening. Just like the lion did. Until the evening, then he's going to come down. He's going he's gonna to what? He's coming to his death. Just like the lion did. You understand? The same thing that was told to Adam, that's exactly what we're reading here in the book of Psalms. All right? Watch this. But what I was asking the question is, because if you look at the generational wealth, that the generation wealth gap that Esau has, he got it through exploitation. Exploitation, covetousness, violence. You understand? We, in order for us to get the wealth, we just guess what we must do. We must labor and we have no rest until the true rest that's coming that the Lord has promised unto us. Watch this. But should we be focusing on getting generational wealth now? That's the question. Because yes, we see the generational wealth gap. Should that be our focus though? Give me Matthew 6, verse 33. Let's see if that's supposed to be our focus. Matthew 6, verse 33. 
Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. 20, uh -huh, come on. But seek ye first the kingdom of God. Do what? Seek ye first the kingdom of God. He says, seek ye first, first, first. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Come on. And his righteousness. And his what? And his righteousness. Because the only way you can seek the kingdom of God is through his righteousness. You must keep the commandments to get the kingdom. That's the requirement. Okay, come on. And all these things shall be added unto you. You see that thing? All the riches, all the wealth, it says those things will be added unto you. Are they going to be added to us now? No. Now if you want anything, you must work a hundred times more for it to get it. Because of what? Because of our disobedience. Okay, that's why you see today our sisters, they want what? They, 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 want, they will say what? A quick, uh, get rich quick schemes. You see that thing? They sell their behind. You understand? Men, they be at the street corner selling dope, selling weed, selling nyaupe, cocaine, drugs. You understand? They don't want to what? They don't want to apply Genesis 3. 17 and 19. They don't want to apply Psalms 104, 21 to 23. They want to go around the judgment that the Lord has set. The judgment that the Lord has brought upon us because of our sin. It's not saying you're not supposed to work. You're not supposed to start a business if you want to. Or not. No, it's not saying that. But you have to go, you, know, you need to do it by the book. You can't, be, there's no shortcut. That's why you see our people, they say, me, I'm into cryptocurrency, me, I'm into Bitcoin, me, I'm into, listen, all of these things, man, they, are, they are designed to what? For our people, to, that's the spirit of what? Get rich quick schemes. That's what they are. That's what, these are pyramid schemes, basically. That's what the man on the top is, the one that is really killing. You understand? And they, guess what? Because they, they see our impoverished state, people are coming up uh, with uh, systems to exploit the minds of our people because our people are vulnerable right now. You understand? And brothers and sisters be falling for this stuff. Read that part again, verse 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things shall be added unto you. And all these things shall be added unto you. That's after when the Lord returns, when he, he gives us the kingdom. That's going to be forever. Watch this. Jump up to verse 19. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. You see that thing? It says, don't lay up for yourself treasures upon earth. Because that's what our people are doing. And the, the manner in which they are laying up the quote unquote quote treasures, they are not doing it according to the script. They are not moving. They, 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 they don't have a moral, they don't have a high moral standard. They don't have that. The end, the end justifies the means. That's their mindset. The end, the end justifies the means of getting whatever it is. They don't care about who they have to hurt, who they have to steal from, who they have to backstab, so on and so forth. How many servers they're going to have to break, you know, all of that to get what they want, what they coveted after. Read that part again, verse 19. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt. Because what? And where thieves break through. So when he says... Verse 19, lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust are corrupt. Meaning what? Meaning don't set your mind upon the things, the material things upon the earth. That's what he's saying. Because, I mean, really think about it. The most high God is called the Almighty. You mean to tell me that the most high God, if he wanted you to read to be rich, he couldn't do it? Really, not. just think about it. He's the Almighty. Okay, if he wanted you to be rich now, say, here, here's a hundred billion, you think the Lord can't do it? Because a lot of us don't think. 
If the most that God wanted to do that thing, you think he couldn't do it? Of course he can do it. But the reason why he's not doing it because he, he knows the Lord knows us. He knows us. We are not correct. Okay? You get a hundred billion, you'll forget the Lord. Okay? You'll forget him. Watch this. Give me um, give me Sirach chapter, chapter 13. I'm going to show you something. Sirach chapter 13, verse 24. Ecclesiastes chapter 13, verse 24. Read. Riches are good unto him that hath no sin. Mm -hmm. And poverty is evil in the mouth of the ungodly. That's some heavy stuff right there. It says, riches are good unto him that has no sin. The reason why the Lord is not giving us riches or wealth or honor and all that is because what? We are in the midst of sin. Our mind is not correct. Our spirit ain't right. That's why the Lord is not giving us these riches of the, the everlasting riches. That's why he's not giving those things to us right now. Because we are in the midst of sin. The mind is not equipped to deal with the riches that the Lord will give to you. You understand? And it says, and poverty is evil in the mouth of the ungodly. Because when you look at our impoverished state, you think, no, this is an evil thing, but you don't examine why the Lord is not what? The, the most that God is not taking away this state that we're in. And he's doing it the way that he's doing it. He says, keep my commandments. Get your mind right. There's a reason why the Lord is doing that. But if, if you are ungodly, you're going you're gonna to look at poverty as an evil thing. Give me Sarah 20 verse 21. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 20 verse 21. Mm -hmm. There is that there is that is hindered from sinning through want. You see that thing? <laughs> and when he takes it. Wait, wait. Is, read that part again. Ecclesiastes chapter 20, verse 21. Read. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. Uh -huh. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. So the Lord says, He says, There is that is, there is that is hindered from sinning through want. The Lord says, the reason why I'm not giving you the things that you are asking for is because I'm stopping you from sinning. I'm saving you from yourself. That's what the Lord is saying right here. He says, I'm hindering you from breaking my laws through lack. I'm going to give you just enough for the day. I'm just going to give you what you need. I'm not going to give you what you want. I'm going to give you what you need because as a people, we mix needs and wants. Mix and wants is the same thing now to us. You can't tell the difference. There's a, the lines are blurred now. You no you can, you longer know what is the difference between a need and a want. You don't know the difference anymore. Why? Because the spirit of covetousness is the one that's running the show. That's why. You understand? So, read that again, verse 21. Ecclesiastes 20, verse 21. There is that is hindered from sinning through want. Mm -hmm. And when he taketh rest, he shall not be troubled. Watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 2, verse 17. Remember what Christ said. Okay, you know what? Before you get me that, give me Proverbs 30. Proverbs 30, verse 8. Because what Sirach is saying is the same thing that King Solomon said. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 8. Proverbs chapter 30 verse 8. Read. Remove far from me vanity and life. Uh -huh. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. You see that part right there? It says remove far from me vanity and life. This is the commandment right here. You understand? That goes into the tent. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Feed me with food convenient for me. Just give me what I need. Remember, he was, his focus was what? Wisdom to judge the nation of Israel righteously. 
He says, I prefer it before sex as a throne. Okay, so what we're reading here is, is what? What is he saying here? Give me Matthew 6, verse 11. Because Christ said it in one word, in one sentence. Proverbs, I mean, Matthew 6, verse 11, read that. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Give us this day our daily bread. Read that again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Read. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. That's the same thing that Solomon is saying. Go back to where he was at. Proverbs 30, verse 8. Again. Proverbs chapter 30, verse 8. Remove far from me vanity and lies. Mm -hmm. Give me neither poverty nor riches. Come on. Feed me with food convenient for me. That's the same thing that Christ said, the same thing that Solomon is saying, the same thing that Sarah is saying, Sarah 20 verse 21. Next verse. Lest I be full and deny thee. You see what happened? And say. So when you pray for those riches, but not only, you're not doing it because you want to help your nation. You are doing it because you want to flaunt. It says, lest I be full, okay, and do what? Lest I be full and deny thee. Meaning what? You're going to forget about this truth. Come on. And say, who is the Lord? Who is the Lord? The what? The God of what? We are the what? The Israelite? Nah. Come on. And say, who is the Lord? Or lest I be poor uh -huh. and steal. You see that thing? That's why our people they steal because they are poor, because they are what the end justifies the means. Go ahead. And steal and take the name of my God in vain. Meaning what? You're gonna reject the most high God now. You are not no longer you going to say the Lord is the one that, that gave you this. You're gonna say, No, I did this. I'm the one. You see that thing? You're going to reject the most I call disloyalty. So a lot of the time you pray for things, but the Lord is not giving them to you because he knows if I give you these things, you are going to reject me. That's some heavy stuff right there. Okay? Watch this. Go back to Matthew chapter 6 now. Matthew 6 verse 19 again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Where thieves break through and steal. Watch this. You see, what we just what we are reading here is the reason why we went to Proverbs 30, verse 8 through 9. Okay. Matthew chapter 6, verse 11. Sarah chapter 20, verse 21. But watch this. Give me the book of Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, just after Proverbs. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 17. We're still on topic. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 17. Therefore, I hated life mm. because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. You see that thing? It says, therefore, I hated life. So King Solomon is telling you what was going on through his mind? He hated life. Because with all the work that he was being done after the stuff, the stuff that he did, did not fulfill him. Okay, come on. Verse 18. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun. Come on. Because, because I should leave it under the man that shall be after me. You see that thing right there? That's why in in in, in in Matthew chapter 6, verse 19, what he read, when he says, don't labor for the things um, that are going to rot upon this earth, that thieves should steal them. Because that's what, that's the, that's what he realized. Or, you know what? All of this is vexation of spirit. All of this is vexation of spirit. So don't get spirit. None of you, no spirit should jump on none of you, thinking, no, you're not supposed to work hard. No. Your focus is supposed to be what? First thing and foremost, the laws of the Most High God. Teaching your people, waking your nation up. That's supposed to be your focus. At the same time, you're supposed to also understand, I need to work, we need to survive where it's labor. But the way in which we survive, we do it according to what? The laws of God. 
but that should not be your focus. That should be a means to work for you to survive, a means for you to be able to take care of the day-to-day -day stuff, knowing that you can also help your nation, you understand, take care of your family and so on and so forth. Okay, read that again. Verse 18. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that should that shall be after me. Ecclesiastes chapter 2, verse 18. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. You see that thing? He says, No, I don't want to do that. So I hate, I hate, I hate my labor because somebody else is going to come and take that. Okay. Because he understood that all of these things, all these things that he's talking about, these things don't matter when it comes to the laws of God. That's why Christ said to us, go back to Matthew 6 33. This is why Christ said what he said. Because a lot of the times we focus on things that have no value. You understand? We're always worried about tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow. Hey, tomorrow. What am I going to eat and all of you are worried about too much? The most high God is right there. You understand? Read that, Matthew 6, 33. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all things shall be added unto you. No, no, all, all these things. Read that, right? Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and in his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that part? And all these things shall be added unto you. All the riches you could ever want, the Lord will give those things to us. That's nothing to the Most High. That's nothing. What the Lord, what the, the thing that the Most High God wants from us is what? We must apply his commandments to get the mind right. So that when this, those things are right, guess what? We're going to appreciate them. That's what the Lord wants. He's humbling us because we were very prideful when we was in the kingdom. Okay? Jump back up to verse 19. Verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, mm -hmm. and where thieves break through and steal. Watch this. Give me the book of John 627. Now. John 6. John 6, verse 27. John chapter 6, verse 27. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you. For him hath God the Father sealed. So why is Christ saying what he's saying here? Jump back up to verse 15. Watch this. The book of John, chapter 6, verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. Right. And when even was now come, his disciples went down unto the sea. Come on. And entered into a ship and went over the sea to, toward Capernaum. And it was now dark, and Jesus was not come to them. Wait. And the sea arose by reason of great wind that blew. Wait. So when they had rowed about five and twenty or thirty furlongs, they see Jesus walking on the sea and drawing nigh unto the ship. And they were afraid. They were afraid because Christ was walking on water. Because remember, he left to go. To the mountain alone by himself to do what to fast because he was accustomed to doing that. So as he is coming back now, they are seeing Christ is walking on water. Okay, ready? But he said unto them, It is I, be not afraid. He says, It is I, don't be afraid. Read on. Then they willingly received him to the ship, and immediately the ship was at the land whither they went. Jump down to verse 24 now. Watch this. Verse 24. When the people therefore saw that Jesus was not there, neither his disciples, they also took shipping and came to Capernaum seeking for Jesus. So then now these people are looking for Christ. 
Okay, they are looking for Christ and his disciples. They are looking for him. Watch this. Come on. Come on, verse 25. Verse 25. And when they had found him, verse 25. And when they had found him on the other side of the sea, they said unto him, Rabbi, when camest thou hither? Wait. Jesus answered them and said, Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. That's some heavy stuff right there. He says, the reason why you're looking for me is not because you saw the miracles. It's not because of that. No, no. It's because, but because he did eat of the loaves and were filled. He says, the only reason why you are following me is because what? It's because of some benefit that has nothing to do with the true gospel of Christ. That's what he's saying right there. What is he saying? Because a lot of the times, you know, when we talk about the feast, the high holidays that are coming, brothers are too excited. When you start to talk about the actual laws behind the feast that we are having, the high holidays that we have to observe, now it starts to become something different. It starts to become better. Because now the reality kicks in. Why are we actually observing the Feast of Passover? Why are we observing the Feast of Pentecost and so forth? You understand? But when it comes to the actual feasting, the, the entertainment part of things, listen, everybody's going to show up. But when it comes to applica applying God's commandments, not everybody shows up. That's what Christ is saying right there. So that's why it says, don't labor for the meat that perishes. You understand? Don't follow me for because of what? Some people are here because they want a job. Some people are here because they want to get married. You understand? Some people are here because they want a better financial whatever. Once they get it, they're gone. That's what Christ is going into. Meaning what? You need to investigate why you are here. That's why I'm talking to you, brother. Why are you here? You need to examine yourself why you're here. Okay? Read that again, verse 26. John chapter 6, verse 26. Read. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, ye seek me not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. Read. Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for the meat which endureth unto everlasting life. The meat that endures unto everlasting life is the commandment, the spirit of Christ. That's the meat that you should be laboring for. Understanding of this Bible, getting your mind right, examining yourself, getting rid of the leaven. That's the meat you should labor for because that endures unto everlasting life. Right? Which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Because Christ is being sealed. Okay? So now you are sealed with what? The law to teach us. So he's saying, don't focus, just meaning what? He's saying, stay focused. Don't lose focus. He said, focus on the important things. Focus on what? Keep the commandments and all his righteousness. And everything else will be added unto you. But now is not the time for that everything else. But a lot of brothers and sisters, they focus on the everything else, except the important things they're supposed to focus on. Because guess what? Where our priorities are not correct. You understand? Our priorities is not right. Go back to Matthew 6. Matthew chapter 6. Verse 19 again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 19. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. Right? But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, Mm -hmm. where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through and steal, nor read that, steal. Read that part again, verse 20. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where, moth, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Watch this. Hmm. Give me one second. One 
me one second. Something I'm looking for. Hmm. Did you read Matthew 6 verse 20 again? Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Come on. And where thieves do not break through and steal. When where thieves do not break through, no steal. So now he's saying that the labor, you must, you must what? You need to be able to understand what you labor in. You must, you, must, you must actually know beforehand what you are laboring for. That's why when we, we usually say Corinthians 3, we had a class about um, how to build. You understand? How to build. Meaning what? You need to be able to know how you build. He says, let every man take heed how he buildeth their own, their pots. You must take heed how you build. Are you going to build on sand? Are you going to build on the rock? So now Christ is saying, listen, you need to know what you are laboring for. You need to know what you are. Are you laboring for the carnal kind of things or are you laboring for the kingdom of heaven that, that, that is at hand? Where's your focus? Prioritize your thing. That's what Christ is saying right there. Okay? Read that again. Read that again with 20. Let's bring it again. One more again. Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither must no rust is corrupt, mm -hmm. and where thieves do not break through nor steal. It says where it says where thieves, where thieves do not break through and no steal. Watch this. Give me Matthew twenty four verse forty three. Matthew twenty four verse forty three. Watch this. Started started verse started verse forty two. Matthew chapter 24, verse 42. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. You see that thing? It says, watch therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord does come. You don't know what hour the Lord is going to show up. You don't know. Okay, come on. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what, in what watch, the thief would come. You see that thing? When it says in what watch, the watch is talking about the time. What time the thief would come? Go ahead. He would have watched. He would have what? He would have watched. He would have watched. So he's letting you know, you take heed how you build their heart. Go ahead. And would not have suffered his house to be broken up. You see that thing? So who's the thief? He's the thief. Read verse 43 again. Matthew chapter 24, verse 43. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched uh -huh. and would have not suffered his house to be broken up. He, he says he would have suffered, he would not allow his house to be broken up. Meaning what? To be put to verse death. Hold on. It says, and would not have suffered his house to be broken up. Meaning what? The Lord is going to show up unannounced when you are not expecting him. He says, no man knoweth the hour. Christ doesn't even know when he's coming. Only the most High God knows that thing. You understand? Could you imagine that? So you need to understand when you are building, know exactly what you are building. When you are laboring, know exactly why you are laboring there for what you labor in for. You must know because you can labor and labor in vain because your mind is on the material things, but you're not looking at what? The riches that the Lord will give you in the kingdom. I mean, to give you riches, that's nothing. That's nothing to the Lord. It's nothing. Your job is supposed to be focused on what? The need that endures unto everlasting life. The laws of God. That's the treasure. That's the treasure that you must really focus on. Okay? Watch this. Give me that in Peter. He shall come as they see, like a thief in the night. 
Second Peter 3, verse 10. Read that. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. Read. But in but the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You see that thing? So the apostle Peter is letting us know. He's explaining the parable. The apostle Peter is explaining the parable of Matthew 24, verse 43. Okay, the thief, the good man, you the good man. Okay, if the good man of the house, you are supposed to be the good man. The good man is the watchman. You the watchman. When the thief comes, you're supposed to be ready for the thief. Okay. You see that thing? Read that again, verse 10. Second Peter chapter 3, verse 10. But the day of the Lord shall come, will come as a thief in the night. Come on. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, uh -huh. and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. Right. The earth also, and the works that are therein, shall be burned up. That thermonuclear destruction that will be upon this earth. Next verse. Seeing that, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, mm -hmm. what manner of persons would ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You see that thing? It says, what manner of person would ye to be in all holy conversation and godliness? You need to get your mind right. That's what he says. Get your mind right before the thief comes into your house and breaks into your house and steals. He says, you must understand what you are laboring for. Don't be laboring only to find out that you are laboring in vain. Because guess what? Your mind is in, is in the world. I need to get this money. I need to get that. No, no, we mustn't move like that. You understand? We must not, that must not be the focus. We need to be able to understand that that is just for us to survive and to help one another. You understand? But when that's supposed to be the driving factor of why you wake up in the morning, you're in the wrong place. Or you're in the wrong state. I'll say that. You're in the wrong state. Okay? Go back to Matthew 6. Okay, Matthew chapter 6, verse 20 again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. You see that thing? It says, where thieves do not break through nor steal. Next verse. Come on. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Read verse 21 again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. Come on. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He says, you see, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So if your treasure is what? Is for you to labor for the things, you understand, that are upon the earth, guess what? Your mind will be on those things that are upon the earth as well. But if your mind is upon the things that, guess what? In verse 20, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. So if your mind, if your treasure if your treasure is upon the things that are in the heaven, that's where your mind is going to be. Meaning what? You must be kingdom-minded. You must be kingdom-minded. You cannot be earthly-minded. Because when you're earthly-minded, your mind is on earthly things. But if you're kingdom-minded, your mind is on heavenly things. Rulership of empires. So if you desire those things, Guess what you must do? You must honor wisdom. Keep God's commandment. Watch this. Give me that in Serac, okay? Because I know that a lot of the times, brothers and sisters, this does not um, does not penetrate the scar. Let's get some more. Give me Serac chapter 11. Serac chapter 11 and verse 14. Watch this. Ecclesiastes chapter 11 verse 14. You know what? Let's start it. Let's start. Let's start it. Let's start a bar. Okay, Sirach chapter 11. Let's start at verse 11. Sirach 11, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 11. Read. There is one that labors mm -hmm. and taketh pains. And does what? And, and taketh pains. And taketh pains. And taketh pains. So there's one that labors. 
they are taking pain. Because remember, uh, give me Micah 4 and 10 real quick. Micah chapter 4 was said, be in pain and labor to bring forth what did it oh, say? daughter. Be in pain and labor to bring forth. Be in pain and labor. Be in pain and labor. Go back to Sirach 11, verse 11. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 11. Read. There is one that laboreth and taketh pain and maketh haste and is so and is so much the more behind. You see that thing? Is that there's one that labors and taketh pain, okay? And maketh haste, meaning you're moving quickly. Because you know that get, get, get rich quick schemes? Uh huh. Is that there's one that labors and taketh pain. That's why you see our people in the entertainment world, in the, in the sports world, you know, in the music world in the social media world and all of that, whatever I have you, in the prostitution world and all that, the drug world. Guess what? They labor, they are taking pain and make it hate because they're getting this money quick, okay? And it's so much more behind. Because guess what? The race is not for the swift. No, no. It says, and it's so much more behind. Because at the end of the day, guess what? When we, when, when the Lord returns and the Lord finds us to be approved, guess what? Those that, there are brothers and sisters that didn't care about this truth. On that day, he's going to show who was the stupid and who was the wise. But right now, it doesn't show right now. It doesn't seem like that. Okay, come on. Verse 12. Again, there is another that is slow. That is what? There is another that is slow. There is another that is slow. Because when you look at the, the progress that we are making as a nation of Israel, it looks like, you know, you are moving slow. It's like, ah, this thing is really not going to take root. You understand? Just, just by teaching on the seed, keeping the commandments, you understand? You're going to rule the earth. It doesn't make any sense. So from, from the carnal mind, it's like, nah, this is not going to work. I'd rather go and do it ESF. You understand? Come on. Again, there is another that is slow and has no and has need of help. You see that we need help. That's why we are always gathering our two cents together. You understand? To buy garments, to buy fridges. You understand? It's, it's tough. It's not easy. We need help. Go ahead. Wanting ability. We lack ability to do what? But you, we lack the ability to do what? To do the things that the Christian church is doing. Because they, the, what people don't know is that the Christian churches, you, you know, you ever wonder why they've got so, they've got big buildings, they are packed and all of that. It's because the people are giving them money. But guess what? Also, there's a special fund from the bank that is dedicated to the church. When you reach a specific number of members, is, I think it's what? I think more than 100 or something like that. You, are, you qualify to get that loan. When you get to, I think when you get to maybe like I think 500 or so, now you become part of the National Council of Churches. When you get to a thousand, I think, members and all that, you become part of that World, World Council of Churches. So there's a system in place. We don't have that. Wanting ability. Go ahead. Wanting ability and full of poverty. Full of what? And full of poverty. Full of poverty because we're in poverty. The little cents we have, the little crumbs we get from the plantation, we are using those to build together. Go ahead. Yet the eye of the Lord looked upon him for good. You see that thing? The eye of the Lord is looking upon us for good. Because guess what? We uphold and keep his commandment. Read. And set him up from his low estate. Because that's exactly what the Lord is doing right now. But the carnally minded don't see that. Read. And lifted up his head from misery, uh -huh. so that many may, so that many that saw it marveled at him. You see that thing when the people see us, when we start to grow. But the most importantly, on that day when the Lord returns, they are going to marvel on that day. They are going to marvel on that day. Watch this. Go ahead. 
prosperity and adversity, life and death, uh -huh. poverty and riches, come from the Lord. Come from the what? Come from the Lord. Come from the Lord. So guess what? So when you are in the midst of poverty, just examine and say, okay, the reason why this is because the Lord is preventing me from the evil that I will find myself into or falling into because of what? Because when that thing comes, it will activate the evil that was sitting in my spirit. So the Lord will do what? The Lord will make sure that that doesn't happen. You understand? The Lord will, the most High God knows how to get, how to get the, the godly out of temptation. He knows how to do that. All right? Read that part again. Genesis 14. Prosperity and adversity, life and death, poverty and riches come from the Lord. They come from the Lord. So when you prosper, it's the Lord. Adversity, the most high. Life and death, poverty and riches, they all come from the most high God. But the one that we must focus on is this one. Next verse. First and foremost. Come on. Wisdom. Knowledge and understanding of the Lord are of the Lord. Love and the way of good works are from him. You see that thing? So wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law, they come from the most high. That's the gift of the law. Love and the way of good works are from him. So all the works that brothers and sisters are putting in, that's the spirit of the most high God working through them. Okay. And all of which, that's what we're supposed to put. That's supposed to be our first love. Our first love is the Bible. Our first love is the most high. Our first love is understanding this Bible and applying it, purging our sins, purging ourselves from the evils that we are in. So when you labor, you need to know exactly what is the reward. Give me Sirach 7. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 36. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 36. Mm -hmm. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, remember the end. Come on. And thou shalt never do amiss. You see what it's saying? Whatever you take it in hand to do, whatever you do, partake in, whatever you labor in, you must always remember the end. If you, you must always know the end goal. That's what it's saying. Once you get, you understand that, you're not going to what? You're not going to make mistakes or you're not going to make poor decisions because you know the end goal. But if you are laboring, because even if you are not laboring because you want to get the kingdom, you labor because you want a job, because you are paying in your last, you want a wife, you want to pass and grind. If that's your goal, guess what? Once you that thing is reached, we're not going to see you anymore. Once you get that job, we're not going to see you no more. Once you get that business, we're not going to see you anymore. Because that was your end goal. But guess what? You are short-sighted. So the wise servant will look at it and say, the end, what is the end goal? The kingdom, rulership of empire, forever. Mm -mm. I'm going to labor for this one right here. Read that again, verse 36. Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 36. Read. Whatsoever thou takest in hand, mm -hmm. remember, the, remember the end. Read. And thou shalt never do amiss. You shall never do amiss. Give me Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Uh -huh. There's no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. You see that thing? So he's saying, whatever you take his hand to do, do it with thy might, meaning put your whole self into it. You know that you are laboring for the need that perishes not, do it with all your might because you know the end goal. You know what the end goal is. The kingdom, dominion over empires, rulership of nations to live forever. You understand? So he's saying you must know exactly. You, the, the last seven, it says, know the end goal. The, Ecclesiastes is saying, listen, now that you know the end goal, put your whole self into it. That's why some of you have been saying to you, ask the question, guess what? Some of you are very slack. Okay, very slack. It's only been a, a two days, the one that I've spoken about recently. Guess what? 
the people that have been the people that have been seeing them communicating about the scriptures and all of that is been the same people one person and i'm seeing there's a secondary one that is now joined the queue which is fine all praise to the most high but the rest of you listen you're still playing games because some of you you know what you do some brothers what i've noticed is that they read right they read the spirit of study they read the scripture and then what they do, they just pick some things in the whatever they where they are reading. They just pick. No, I'm gonna just pick whatever I'm reading. You can see, like the question you are asking tells me exactly that you are not into this. You are just doing it because an inspection came out. You dumb as hell. You are you are, you, are, you don't understand. You don't see the end goal. The end goal is the kingdom. This is for your soul. So when you when you just pick a scripture and you send it to me and you ask like a question just so that you can just say tick you know and no i i, I asked the question you're not fooling me you're fooling yourself because you don't know you don't understand what this is about your soul is on the line here you studying is to help you to be in the spirit so when the lord returns your house is not is not broken under but a lot of you you are doing it because the infection went out then you don't know why you are here you don't, let me tell you straight. You don't know why you're here. Because if you know why you're here, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna listen. Somebody that is studying, I can tell you, I, I know those that I know I know those that study in this camp. I know them. I know brothers and sisters that study. I know them. So you're not gonna fool me. And some of you, since the inspection came out, you think you can fool me. And I'm not gonna say nothing. I'll just watch you fall. Because the class is coming out and they say, brothers, study, brothers, we need to do this. No, you got one year out the app, you're not listening. I'm just gonna sit there and just say, okay. I hear you are self-worth. I hear you think you're too clever. You're a genius. Yes. So you be the genius. We're gonna labor because we done. We bake. We're gonna sit down and take the milk. Okay? Like a baby sucking on his mother's breast. That's what we're gonna do. But the rest of you. Listen, I don't know what, what's going on in the mind, okay? Because your mind is not here. And I can tell by the questions you're asking that you're not into this. Well, that's fine. The Lord, we're praying for more laborers. The Lord will send laborers that are going to do the work that I don't have to be following around, okay? Read that part again. It is your seed. Okay, the Spirit just hit me on this day because I, I picked something up this week. It is your seed, chapter 9, verse 10. Read what you got. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 8. Come on. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Uh -huh. There is no work, no device, no knowledge, no wisdom in the grave, whither thou goest. You see that thing right there? So he says you must put your whole self into this thing. Put your whole self into it now that you know the end goal. That's why you see that movie, Avengers, the end game. We know the end game. <laughs> we know the end game. But some of you, you, you don't care about the end game. It's not in your mind. You don't care about it. That's okay. Nobody's going to force you. Okay. But the mission is a goal. Don't get it twisted. The mission is a goal. I'm going to tell you like I told those that left. The mission is a goal. The mission is a goal. Understand that. Watch this. Go back to Matthew chapter 6 verse 20. Matthew 6 verse 20. Matthew chapter 6, verse 20. Come on. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through nor steal. Come on. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see that thing? Where your treasure is, guess what? Your mind is going to be on the treasure as well. Because if the Bible is your treasure, your mind is going to be on this book. If the world is your treasure, your mind is going to be on worldly things that perish. So the choice is yours. Choose you this day whom you will serve. That's what the Bible is saying. Okay? Read verse 21 again. Matthew chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Watch this. Give me that in Matthew. I mean, give me Proverbs. Give me the book of Proverbs chapter 2. We touched on this when we we're going over the study class. 
You understand? Proverbs chapter 2, verse 3. Watch. See Proverbs 2, verse 1 again. The book of Proverbs chapter 2, verse 1. My son, if thou wouldst receive my words and hide my commandment to thee. So the word is the commandment. Come on. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom mm -hmm. and apply thine heart to understanding. Because when you incline your ear to wisdom, guess what? You're going to receive understanding. Go ahead. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge uh -huh. and lifted up thy voice for understanding. Meaning you must lift up your voice for understanding. Meaning ask questions. That's what he says. Yea, if thou criest after knowledge. Meaning what? If you study, that's the knowledge. When you study, you're going to lift up your voice for understanding. No, I'm studying. I don't understand what I'm studying. That's a good student. Go ahead. If thou stickest her as silver uh -huh. and searchest for her as for hid treasures. You see that thing? It says you must seek after knowledge like you're seeking for silver. You must search for the wisdom of the most High God as for hid treasures because it's hidden. This knowledge that is written in this book is not for everyone. If you're not serious about what is written, the Lord will not give you that thing. It's that simple. But some of you, you still don't get it because you don't know why you are here. Next verse. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. Come on. And find the knowledge of God. You see that thing? You're going to understand the fear of the Lord and understand the knowledge of God. Next verse. Watch this. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh -huh. Out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. The mouth of the Lord is this Bible. It says, for the Lord giveth wisdom. Go back to Sirach 11 verse 14. Sirach chapter 11, no verse 15. Sirach 11 verse 15. Read that. The book of Ecclesiasticus chapter 11 verse 15. Read. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law are of the Lord. Read. Love and the way of good works are from him. So wisdom, knowledge, and understanding of the law comes from the Most High God. It's a gift of the Most High. Go back to Proverbs chapter 2 and verse 6. One more again. The book of Proverbs chapter 2 verse 6. Read. For the Lord giveth wisdom. Uh -huh. Out of his mouth come knowledge and understanding. For the Lord giveth wisdom. The Most High God is the one that will give you the wisdom of this book. Only if you seek after the, his wisdom like for hidden church. Because that, this is the church. This is the treasure right here. The greatest treasure on earth is this Bible. So your conduct, your behavior will dictate your seriousness. Go back to, go back to Matthew now, chapter 6, verse 21. Matthew 6, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 21. Read. For where your treasure is, they will your heart be also. You see that thing? Your treasure. There, but if the Bible is not your treasure, your mind will not be in this Bible. Let me say that again. If your, if your treasure, if this Bible is not a treasure to you, the laws and statutes and commandments, the wisdom that is written in this book, the promises in this book, if this is not a treasure to you, your mind will not be buried in this Bible. Impossible. It won't be. You'll always be confused, okay, all the time. Read that again, verse 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 21. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You see that thing? But if you're in the world, you care about what you think, your mind will be over there. Your mind will be over there. But if it's about this Bible right here, your mind will be buried in this Bible. And we're going to see it by your, your conduct, your speech, your work, the things you do. You understand? We're going to see that this brother is who has struck you with this. Now the Lord is, is what? The Lord is, is, is blessing him in this area. The brother was rebellious about such and such. Now he's getting it, he's examining himself and repenting. The Lord is blessing him. That spirit of rebellion has left. So on and so forth. We're going to see that. But if your, if your mind is not very in this Bible, those demons will never leave you. They'll always be they'll always be wandering around you all the time. Because you don't you don't look at this as a threat. Okay? So again, going back to the original questions that I posed, should we
be focusing on attaining generational wealth right now? No. No. That's not the focus. Go back to Matthew 6. Read Matthew 6, 33. So we don't lose the thought. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. You see that thing? You must seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Your mind must be upon scepter. If your, your mind must be upon scepters and thrones. If your mind is upon scepters and thrones, like it says in Wisdom of Solomon 6, guess what? You're going you're gonna to honor wisdom and his righteousness. That's what you're going to do. Watch this. Jump back up to verse 21. Read verse 21 again. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 21. Mm -hmm. Who where your treasure is, they will your hearts be also. Read. The light of the body is the eye. The what? The light of the body is the eye. The light of the body is the eye because your eyes is the one that direct where your body should go. That's what he's saying. Go on. But it is that the parable. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to explain it like this for now. Go ahead. If therefore thine eye be single. If what? If therefore thine eye be single. If therefore your eye be single. He's not talking about having one eye. No. He says you must be what? You must be single-minded. In terms of the laws of God. If your eyes be single, meaning what? Your focus must be on the laws of God, the treasure which is in heaven. That's why it says, if your eye be single, you must be focused on keeping the laws of the most high God and waiting upon his son to return. Read. Thy whole body shall be full of light. You see that thing? Your whole body will be full of light. If your mind is, is focusing on this Bible, your whole body will be full of light. You are going to be illuminated. Give me Baruch 4. Baruch chapter 4. Verse 1. No, no. Just get, get to this. You know, read verse 1 and 2. Baruch 4 verse 1 and 2. The book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 1 and 2. This is the book of the commandment of God. Uh -huh. And the law that endureth forever. Come on. All they that keep it shall come to life. Shall what? Shall come to life. If you keep God's commandments, you're going to come to life. Read on. But such as leave it shall die. You're going to be spiritually dead and physically dead when the Lord returns. Go ahead. Turn thee, O Jacob. Turn thee, O Jacob. He says, return unto the Lord. That's what he's saying. Read. And, and take hold of it. Take hold of the treasure. Take hold of the treasure. Read. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Do what? Walk in the presence of the light thereof. You see that thing? It says, thy whole body shall be full of light. If what? If your eye be single. If your eye be single, guess what? Your whole body shall be full of light. Take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof. Because your mind is single. Go ahead. Take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Because your whole body will be full of light. Go back to Matthew chapter 6, verse 22 now again. The book of Matthew chapter 26, verses 22. No, chapter 6. The Not book of 26. Matthew chapter 6, verses 22. Read. The light of the body is the eye. Come on. If therefore... And I be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. Read. But if thine eye be evil, thine whole body shall be full of darkness. You see that thing? If your eye be evil, meaning what? If you are laboring for things that are perishing upon earth, it says what? Your whole body will be what? Shall be full, shall be full of darkness. Your whole body shall be full of darkness, full of sin. The darkness is the sin. Go ahead. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is the darkness? You see that thing? If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness? It's greater than you can possibly imagine because you have light and then the light is overtaken by that darkness by sin. 
meaning you no longer labor for the things that are pertaining to the heavens, you understand, to the kingdom of heaven, but you are laboring for things that pertain upon this earth. Okay, come on. No man can serve two masters. You see that part right there? No man can serve two masters. That's why Joshua said, choose you this day whom you will serve. No man can serve two masters. One is what? One is for the things that are happening in this world, meaning what? The evils of the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, which is not of the Father, but is of this world. You understand? So that's one master. The other master is what? Christ. He's the master. So you choose which one you want to serve, but you can't have both. Read that part again. The book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one uh -huh. and love the other. You see that thing? So oh. you can hold on. You can't have both. You're going to hate the one and love the other. So if your mind be upon what? If, you, if your mind be upon the earthly things, guess what? You're going to hate the most I got. You're going to hate his son. You're going to hate his son as well. You're going to hate the laws that are written in this book. You're going to hate the most High God and his son. But if you love the most High God and his son and the laws that are written in this book to apply them, you hate the things that are happening in the world. That's just what it is. Go ahead. Or else he will hold to one and despise the other. Mm -hmm. He cannot serve God and mammon. You see that thing? You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the devil. You can't. And money. You cannot. Impossible. That's what Christ is teaching us right here. So that's why it says you be mindful of what you are laboring for. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Let's get there. Okay? Give me that in Joshua. Joshua chapter 23. That's what I want. In, uh, Joshua 24, verse 16. Joshua 24, verse 16. Read that. The book of Joshua. Chapter 24. The book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 15. Read. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you the stay whom you will serve. You see that thing? If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, if it's an evil thing for you to study, to ask questions, let's bring it in the context. If it seem evil unto you to study, to genuinely bury your mind into this Bible, okay? What did the Lord say? Do what? If it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, Choose you this day whom you will serve. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Go ahead. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood uh -huh. or, the, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land he dwell. Read. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. That's right. But as for me and my house, we will serve the most like God. It is what it is. So some of, a lot of you brothers and sisters that are not serious, you don't want to study and all of that, listen, you playing yourself because you're not fooling any of us. You are fooling your own self. Okay, I'm bringing this out because you brothers and sisters don't really understand what this is about. Although it's coming out because your mind is not in the Bible. You're, you don't believe this book. Let me put it like that. You know, it's the same is a lot. The, the, what I'm saying when I say you don't believe this book is funny because we say this to our people that in the world when we go out to teach. That's why when brothers and sisters come to camp to learn, we all ask the question: Do you believe the Bible? They be saying yes. When we read the Bible, you can see they don't believe it. That spirit out there is that spirit up in here. You understand? The same spirit is moving. Because brothers think you can just wing it. We can just wing it. No, no, it's not about that. You can't wing this. You cannot wing this thing. Okay? I'm going to end the class right here. All right? Um, let's break bread. First Corinthians chapter 11.
verse 23. I'm going to end the class right there. First book of Corinthians, chapter 11, verses 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same man also he took the cup when he had subbed, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood. This to ye as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as ye eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. In the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.